But I want us to, to look at really quickly is how they've changed or updated reflection probes because there's a lot of stuff that um, makes reflection probes just cosmetically way more appealing now than they used to be. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that really quick. So let me, um, let me actually uh, turn off this uh, indoor volume really quick. Um, and I'm actually probably going to, for now, I'm just gonna reduce the, the noise intensity on this light, um, on the, the grain for the camera so that it just, uh, it looks a little bit clearer. Um, but anyway, so we want to take a look at what reflections do now in 2018 with the HD pipeline. Actually gonna, I'm gonna turn out that, off that chromatic aberration to reduce it a lot. Um, because reflection probes used to be very, very restricted. They used to be very just like um, simple boxes where the reflection projects to the back or so to the to the edges um, and you don't have a whole lot of control over that. Um, so I want to show you some of the things that they allow you to do now, which they didn't didn't used to. So uh, I made earlier there's a material um, where we had this uh, we had a reflective material, but that was in a separate project. Um, so I'm just going to go create a new material. Reflective. Um, I'm going to drop this uh, material onto the floor that I have in this environment. Um, you're not going to see much because right now it's not really reflecting anything. But then um, I'm going to go ahead and create a small reflection probe for this environment. So I'm going to go to game object, light, reflection probe. Um, and I'm going to just roughly try to shape a probe that's close to the size of this environment. So um, all these settings are uh, what you might expect. Um, so you, if you've used reflection probes before, um, you'll notice that it actually is kind of nice that it shows us the uh, axis color now, which is uh, something that it didn't used to do, which is pretty neat. Um, just trying to get this fit within here. Too bad. Um, okay, so we've got this reflection probe. Now I can bake this probe. Um, I can also set it to real time. And for right now, it might be easiest to work with in real time, just so I can kind of see uh, see what's what. Um, now, real time is really bad for performance, so I really don't recommend you doing that under normal circumstances. <laughs> so just, just keep that in mind. Um, but then, okay, so I've got my reflective floor. So I can make this like hyper metallic for a second. So I can see really clearly what this reflection looks like. Um, and it's also smooth just so we can have an idea of like what we're visually looking at. So um, let's quickly make some edits to the settings here. Um, so first of all, um, you can see that this is not a box projected reflection. Um, so we have the setting, first of all, to be able to make a um, sphere, for example, which didn't used to be something that you could do, um, which now you can actually make it directly a sphere of influence. Um, you can also affect the blend distance on that sphere, um, so you can control that all naturally. Um, I know that since not every shape is a... Uh, a box that's actually pretty useful to be able to do um, but we always ran into this kind of problem where there's like this blend distance thing where like maybe one corner should have a faded uh, blend distance whereas maybe another corner shouldn't have that much of a fade um, and so that used to be much more of a problem uh, than it is now um, because we actually have some ways to control that that we just didn't didn't used to um, so let, let's first of all, we have our normal, but we can go to advanced. Um, and so in the advanced settings, we have all kinds of cool stuff that we can do. So first of all, one of the things that is different now um, is that rather than just having a tick box for box projection, which does make this a little bit more annoying, um, you actually have a proxy volume. So you can say, 
Um, there's a list here, it, which is there's a slot here. Uh, when no pop proxy setted, influence shape will be used as the proxy shape too. Um, so you could say um, all of that like is is easily configurable here. Um, but if we want to have a little more control over this, we could go to say add component, um, and then I can type and start typing in ref reflection. Um, there's a uh, reflection proxy volume component. Um, and then this component, I can just drag up into the um, proxy volume. And then you'll notice that this starts uh, doing something a little bit weird here. Um, and basically what this al allows you to control now is that you can control more specifically where this uh, box size um, and offset is actually projecting the display of this uh, environment. So um, there's a few different ways that uh, this can be edited. I mean, one way you can like, for example, I, if I wanna make my box size um, and offset exactly equivalent, I can quickly just copy these values. There might be an easier way to do this. That's, um, I'm not 100% sure if this is optimal. Um, but so like, for example, if I'm getting all these pieces here, um, and so then I have my, you know, my reflection that is uh, projecting to uh, this surface. Like one of the things that's very neat about this though, is that I can actually um, determine where these are going differently. So like a good example of this, like you might be kind of aware of this from having to deal with this in the past, um, is that if you're uh, reflecting you know, kind of a box projection here. If you wanted that box to extend, um, you know, out, there's often not very much um, reason for there to be like a clear reflection of a wall there. That doesn't really seem to make sense, right? Um, so one thing that you could do um, is you could, you know, you could try to just project this wall out and that would be one thing but you can also do it where you actually just say okay i'm actually going to make that wall in the projection extend further away right so even though um this reflection is directly affecting um only this area like so it's only actually affecting objects that are on the inside of this this projection um, I'm actually projecting the image of the proxy all the way out into the environment a decent direct, uh, decent distance. Um, and so I want to be careful that I make sure that I do that correctly so that it's not going to be, you know, like pushing this out too far. Um, but that gives me the ability to actually get a reflection that by default actually more accurately represents what that type of um, location is. And that's, uh, I don't know if this is gonna be exciting to you, uh, how much involvement you've had with reflection probes in the past, but this is actually quite a nice change from where reflection probes used to be because this used to be an extremely difficult thing to try to get looking accurate because you'd have all of this difficulty in, um, well, I need these three walls to be right here and I don't want this reflection probe to be extending outside for its influence to extend outside of, of this boundary, but I don't want it to be reflecting a wall here because that just doesn't make any sense. There's no way that there would be a wall there. So you can actually make uh, these edits and have a little more um, control over it in an interesting kind of organic way. Um, now, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a couple of other things because so for example, um, we have this face fade option and this is kind of interesting. Um, so if I were to take like say the face Z and fade it out, um, what you'd notice is essentially what's happening here is that now the face on that side is essentially just like not being uh, rendered or it's, it's fading out. So if I were to bring that, um, that other face in tighter, uh, so I think if like I, uh, you know, bring this kind of back into roughly where it was before. Um, another another way that I can kind of benefit from that, um, if say I wanted it to look like I was only really reflecting 
this environment and I wasn't trying to reflect a whole bunch of things outside of it. Um, you can do a little bit of that with kind of like a face fade here. Um, now this isn't the perfect example of this because there are other um, contexts where this can be better utilized. So another feature that's really interesting that you probably want to use sparingly unless you know what you're deliberately using it for. I mean, this is a common feature for water and other types of effects, but it does produce rendering overhead that's more substantial than uh, normal reflection probes, is you can actually create a um, planar reflection probe that produces an accurate representation of the environment being reflected onto, say, the floor or water or something like that. So if you go to Game Object, Light, uh, planar reflection probe. Um, you can create one of these um, and it can have a um, pretty cool effect. So um, I'm going to just drop this down so that it roughly is the at the level of the floor. Um, and then I can go ahead and increase the, uh, the influence size. And you'll notice that wherever I have this, um, it creates a real-time um, accurate representation of the reflection of the environment. And obviously the bigger it gets, um, the more it's going to capture. But um, basically, so I can create a situation like this where I'm uh, essentially producing a reflection probe that is an accurate representation of an environment like in, in the way that it would project onto a floor or other like planar surface. Now this is a kind of effect that you can use in a lot of different contexts and generally this is a system that would work uh, in much the same way as making your own kind of custom rolled system uh, would work with script or cameras because you can create camera reflections to um, produce a similar effect. Um, but it, it is worth keeping in mind that this actually is essentially a camera. So if you go to light planar reflection probe, um, the object that is created actually has basically all the same settings as a camera does. Um, and it also has, of course, you know, some of the artistic values and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do things like overriding the field of view, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, considering you want to actually view it in the camera. Um, then you can also affect things like a blend distance and that stuff can definitely help you modify it. Um, the main thing that you want to keep in mind though is just that these, um, these can be used in a variety of different capacities. Um, so for example, if I'm uh, rotating this around here, um, you just want to make sure that you actually have it lined up with wherever it is that you're trying to produce the reflection. So. Um, this here actually only has a 0 0.01 influence area. So it does actually have a plane itself that is technically the projection that is coming on. So if you were to make it very large, if I were to change that box size, um, you can make the reflection look inaccurate by moving it away from where this, uh, this actual plane is. Um, but you've got to be careful that you place it in the correct um, locations so that it doesn't... <clears throat> doesn't miss it but it is definitely neat though because while it is seeming like you just have a, a plane here that is actually using uh that is being used to produce the um re produce the reflection it's not technically that's not technically what it is you're actually creating a reflection probe that is being used to generate that um, that reflection. So while this reflection here appears to look like it's just, you know, a camera that was placed onto that that wall, um, it is actually affecting objects behind it. So if I tighten this up, I can make that 0 0.01 so that it only applies to this, but all the material properties still apply the same way. So I can go ahead and I can take that uh, reflective material I can reduce that down while still keeping that reflection. Um, I can change the smoothness and you can ha see how that will still affect that accurately. I don't know why you would usually want to do that if you're not making it a pretty clear reflection, but you can also change the color and all that kind of stuff. So 
Um, you can have a lot of control over this in the same way that you normally would any kind of material property, but you have the uh, benefit of a pretty clear reflection that is produced from it. Um, now, again, this is a very selective type of thing, so I would think you should be very careful with how you utilize it um, because you don't want this to go too far. And if you want to make edits to what this looks like here, you see how uh, there's a little bit of a pixelation there. Um, you can always go to your render pipeline asset um, and you can see that there's options for planar reflection uh, resolution. So for example, this one is a 1024. I can change that to 2048 and you'll notice that that becomes like much more consistent with the resolution of the environment around it. Um, or you could make it, you know, look really crazy and just make it like way too low res. Um, I think 512 kind of reminds me of like the, the mirrors in Dead Rising. But anyway, okay, so that's, uh, that's a basic idea of how planar reflections work. And there's definitely a lot more stuff that I could cover, but I hopefully this will give you an overall primer of what to expect on the features that are available in Unity 2018 HD Render Pipeline. Obviously, I'm not showing you today exactly how I would go about creating like a high-quality aesthetic scene, um, but this should give you a general idea of how these features work and how to implement them. Hope you enjoyed the videos, and look forward to seeing you in the next one.